Ladies and gentlemen, you look at the great players of the Pittsburgh Pirates of the 1960s and 70s, obviously Stargell, Mazeroski, uh, Doc Ellis, uh, Dave Parker. But uh, this guy who was a partner to Mazeroski in the infield became one of the most recognized all-around uh, infielders in Major League Baseball history. Although when he only played uh, 10 years with the Pirates, injuries uh, shortened his career. Anything he was asked of, he would do it. He could platoon, he could play uh, different infield positions, had a good bat on occasion, sometimes that 747 uh, style, seven home runs, 47 RBIs came in handy. Of course, he was part of the 71 World Series winners and, of course, the consecutive uh, NL East title holders of the early 1970s. So we're going to be talking with the pride of Richmond, Virginia, Gene Alley. Now, this was a request from our uh, good friend Patrick Moreska. As we like to say, Ryan's with Fresca. Patrick's always has uh, good suggestions for the channel, and thank you, Patrick, yet again. Now, uh, he played, again, his entire career with the Bucks between 1963 and 73. A two-time All-Star, Alley was a member of the Bucks teams that won, again, three consecutive NL uh, East titles between 70 and 72, and he defeated Baltimore in seven games in 71. Now, Alley, again, was a modest hitter in the 250 range, but an exceptionally steady shortstop with good range and an accurate throwing arm. He won two Golden Gloves at shortstop in 66 and 67, and also garnered two All-Star Game appearances, primarily on the strength of his glove. He spent most of his career turning double plays with, again, Mazeroski, who he subbed for uh, in the early part of his career. Now, the duo set a world record, and uh, what, of course, MLB record, of 161 double plays in a season in 66. <coughs> that still stands. Now, that year, the Pirates set a National League record with 250 in total double plays. They also joined a select list of eight shortstop second baseman duos to each win a gold glove the same season while playing together. Uh, this was in 67 and 68. Now, shoulder and knee problems ultimately ended his career and prevented him from realizing his full potential. Now, the right-handed bat batter and thrower had a career batting average of 254 with 55 homers and 342 RBIs, but it didn't show his full uh, worth to the Pirates. Again, he would do anything that was expected of him. Now, he had spent several years in the minor leagues. He was looking at a basketball career uh, through his uh, university uh, years in Virginia. Now, I think the Phillies were heavily interested before the Pirates, again, was his final uh, decision. He was sent to, uh, I think it was at one point, he was class D-ball, made it all the way to major leagues within a half a decade, so tremendous. First game was September 4th, 63. Last game, September 27th, 73. Now, he's also known for one of the most interesting plays in Canadian baseball history. On September 7th, 2nd, 1970, at Venerable Jerry Park, he hit an inside-the-park Grand Slam against, again, the hometown Expos. With the bases loaded, facing Carl Morton, who was a uh, sensation uh, pitching for uh, Montreal for several years, he hit a line drive which landed in front of center fielder Boots Day, who slipped on the uh, very, very wet uh, Jerry Park grass. The ball rolled all the way to the wall in deepest center field, and all the base runners and alley scored. Now, uh, this video of the event is available on YouTube, and I don't think it's Dave Van Horn on the announcing, but it's quite interesting because at one point uh, the uh, the announcer thought Richie Hebner did it, but you know Gene Alley, uh, nothing would uh, surprise people because again a great all-around player. Uh, he was well known for being trained by Pittsburgh staff to try to use his batting stance to the best of his ability by trying to pull everything to right field, which led to the above average average uh, through the years. Now, uh, for his great uh, talent in Major League Baseball, again, including the World Series, he was inducted into the outstanding Virginia Sports Hall of Fame. If you're making a Virginia Sports Hall of Fame, ladies and gentlemen, you got to be good. Some of the best athletes in American history hail from Virginia. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Patrick, for the request. If you do have a request, just remember, they're highly considered and highly appreciated. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, or share and we have an archive of uh, 2,000 podcasts and sports and entertainment on the channel. If you're a new subscriber, please check us out. We specialize in Major League Baseball vintage, NHL vintage, uh, NFL vintage, and of course, uh, Night Gallery, where I posted uh, some 45 or 50 
episodes from the pilot to season three. So thanks for dropping by and uh, enjoy the rest of the summer. Thanks for listening. Bye.